Hello everyone, this is Craig Chamberlain with Precision Electric and we're bringing another video to you today on the SM Vector Variable Frequency Drive. This particular drive is one of our most popular and today's video is going to go over the wiring of selector switches for your start-stop control instead of push buttons. In a previous video, uh, actually the previous video, we showed you how to wire the two push buttons for your forward and reverse and wire the stop for uh, stopping it at any point in time. Nice thing about using a selector switch instead is this switch is all you need. You don't need any of the buttons. This is a three-way selector switch, which allows me to actually run it in forward, reverse, and stop. So this one switch can handle all three tasks. So that's one of the major advantages of it. Now we're not just a drive distributor. We do sell these drives, but we are an automation service center, so make sure you check us out. We uh, do full fabrication, panel fabrication, automation controls, and basically anything you can think of in the industrial world. We can do it, or we have the people who can do it. So let's go ahead and get started. As always, I'll have you open up the manual. We're actually going to be working in the same section of the manual we did in the previous video, and that is in section 4.5.2. On mine, it's on page 31. It is for the programmable inputs on the drive, and we're going to be programming these inputs for this selector switch. There are a couple prints at the bottom of that section, for parameters 121 through 124. And the one we're looking at is the one on the far left for run forward and run reverse with selector switches. And essentially, the wiring is very similar to what we did before, except for we no longer need to wire a stop button between our one and four, which is our common, and our, uh, and our drive enable. We basically leave the drive enabled all the time, and we let the selector switch determine when we go forward and when we go reverse. Now you can optionally wire a e-stop in there if you'd like. That way if you hit it, it'll disable the drive. Typically we use we have e-stops drop the input voltage though, just for security. But if for some reason you're doing like a ramping e-stop, you may want to wire it between one and four. For the sake of this demonstration, we're just going to leave that jumper. So let's go ahead and get it wired and programmed and then I will show you running. The first part I want to show you is this jumper that I talked about. It is on the print on that section 4.3.2 diagram. The jumper is between one and four. This is our drive enable. Now, in order for the drive to run in terminal strip control, you have to have this enable closed. In the previous video, we actually had a stop button that had a normally closed contact between those, but we no longer need a stop button for our selector switch control because you'll see why here in a moment, but when we take the selector switch off of the run, it'll automatically stop. Now, terminal fours are common, so we also need to wire terminal four to the other side of our selector switch for both the forward selector switch and the reverse selector switch sections of the terminal block. Now mine is a three, basically it's a three pole selector switch or a three way selector switch. I am able to wire this particular wire to that one selector switch in two different areas to get two normally open contacts on the selector switch. Depending on the selector switch you have, you may need to have two different selector switches, but since mine's a three-way selector switch, I actually had to have, um, I, had to, I only had to have one wire going to those, that block on the selector switch itself. On the other side of that block on my selector switch, I have the forward section, which is turning to the right, coming in to 13A, which is our programmable input, which we will be programming for run forward and then on the other side of my normally open contact on the third side of my selector switch, I have it coming into 13B, which I will be programming for run reverse. Essentially, when I flip my switch one way, this will go to one side of my block out of common, and then electricity will flow through to 13A, and then when I flip the switch to the other side, electricity flow from 4 to 13B. You may need to use your meter in order to find out which normally open and normally closed parts of your block are on your selector switch to wire it successfully. Again, the print is actually right there in that section. You can look, look it over if you'd like. So let's go ahead and program it. First thing we need to do is press the menu button and go down to parameter 100 just to verify that we are in terminal strip control. It's got to be set to 01. If it's not set to 01, then it's not in terminal strip control. If it's set to zero, 00, it's in keypad control, which means you can only start and stop it from the keypad. So I'm going to set it to 1 and press the menu button again. And then I'm going to press the menu button a third time to bring up the parameters again. And I'm going to go up to parameter 121. 
Now this is the parameter that programs this 13A input. I'm gonna set this to 13, which actually means start forward. Let me, let me double check that. Parameter 121. Nope, it's run forward. There's a difference between those two. Let me, let me point that out. When you're using push buttons, you wanna set that to run to start forward, which is 11, which waits for a momentary connection of electricity. 13, or run forward, requires that electricity is constantly flowing between four and 13A for it to keep running forward. That's how when we turn off the selector switch, the drive will turn off. So we're gonna do the same thing for 13B. That's parameter 122. We're gonna set that to 14, which is run reverse. So as long as electricity is flowing between four and 13B, it'll be running in reverse. And once we open up that switch, it'll stop. So let's go ahead and run it. So as I said before, this is a three-way selector switch, which means right now it's in the center state, which means both my forward and reverse are actually open. So no electricity is flowing to 13A or B. Now, if I flip it forward, it closes the contact between four and 13A and it runs forward. I can go back to my middle state, which opens it. And remember, you have to maintain the electricity the way we programmed it with the run forward, run reverse. And since it's no longer got that connection, it stops. So let me go to the other way. This will actually run it in reverse because the electricity is now being maintained between four and 13B. And that's how we programmed it. So everything's working great. One nice thing about selector switches as well is if I have it in forward, I can switch it right over to reverse and it'll kick right in it. That's just how the drives work. They're designed to be able to turn from forward to reverse at any point in time and it'll use your ax cell and D cell times you have programmed. So that's all there is to this video. That's how you wire a uh, forward and reverse selector switch to your drive. Uh, again, thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to check out our website at precision-elec.com or precisionelect.com. And uh, we do everything uh, for your industrial electronics and motor service center. We have full-blown electrical panels uh, fabrication. We have programming of automation and PLCs, servos. We do full servo repair, drive repair, you name it. So thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.